Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Laura, it's been a couple weeks. I missed you all and thank you for bearing with me. I was traveling, I had a lot going on and um, this is long overdue. So, or actually it's right on time. Um, the videos always come out right on time for whatever divine timing is that we need, the messages for this wave. This is gonna be a 144,000 message. So this is a message for the Twin Flames. This is a message for the 144,000. And this is gonna be looking into the entire energy for January of 2024. And I feel like we're not really prepared for what's coming. Um, I don't think it's possible to really prepare for such a galactic shift that is gonna be taking a hold of everyone here. And that's everyone on our wave. Um, the counterparts especially are gonna be very affected by this energy, getting the unseen, okay? And see what's happening with the unseen. The crone, divine feminine energy is gonna be affected first. So the crone is the divine feminine. The crone is the wise, mystic, feminine energy. That doesn't matter what age you are. It's about you have been through all of the cycles of initiation. You've been initiated as the maiden. You've been initiated as the mother. You're now going to be initiated as the crone. And you are going to start to see beyond the veil times a thousand is what I'm hearing. So you probably already have psychic abilities and it's going to be even more. We're getting the storm because there's something coming here that feels very... I know so they say something big is coming. Sounds like a cue drop, but something big is obviously coming. The mirror. This is for the counterparts. Okay, so whatever it is that's happening and we're going to find out is what is happening to the counterparts. The mirror, the healer. Okay, because divine feminines are natural healers, natural mystic healers. And what I'm not seeing here right away is the divine masculine. So let's clarify all of these cards and see what we are going to be seeing. Okay. Um, see what's going to be reflected back to us by this massive storm energy. Appreciation. I feel, okay. When I get appreciation, I feel it's immediately the divine masculine being very appreciative and seeing a reflected version of the Divine Feminine. I'm seeing the Divine Masculine looking in the mirror and seeing the Divine Feminine because that's the effect of Twin Flames is that you see the other one's reflection when you look in the mirror because you are the same. Um, yin Yang, Union, Energy, Victory, and Hostilities. Victory over the Hostilities that have been attempting to get in between divine union, that have been attempting to um, corrupt the name of Twin Flames because they failed, that's what I'm getting here, and we have actually won because I do not feel that any hostile energy can come up against a Twin Flame couple in union and succeed. So union energy is like your shield. Union energy and the feeling is to me that you don't actually have to be in physical union to have a shielding effect on the rest of the earth. So, okay. Okay. Divine counterparts are very magical beings and very cosmic magical beings that have a frequency that is not like other humans. And that's not because of superiority, it's because we have activated our Merkaba to spin at a significantly higher rate consciously, and we are vibrating at a different frequency. And so what happens is when anything happens in the 3D, and when any events happen in the 3D, what your purpose of being an activated 144,000 twin flame is to shield you from this effect, okay? So you look in the mirror, you connect your counterpart, or you look at them in person, you connect your counterpart, and it immediately has this force field effect on you both to protect you from third dimension. And so you're gonna be, it's like 
a teleportation energy that teleports you, even if you're in the middle of something really radical happening all around you, and this is just the feeling, you would be in a protective bubble where none of that would touch you. So I'm seeing it's like if some natural disaster occurred, you would be left in this protective bubble where you would be untouched, even though maybe everything around you was decimated. And that's actually the feeling to me. I wouldn't go test this theory out. I'm just saying this is the feeling because it's that, that's that much of a um, higher frequency when you are tapped into the heart, when you're tapped into the unseen, when you're tapped into divine love that protects you and shields you. Okay, let me get a Moonology card. Let me just see, tell me about this hostile storm warning. Okay. You and your, okay. Because uh, I don't make it up. You and your loved ones are safe. It's the hermit crab. It's the feeling of this is a new moon in cancer energy. Okay, so this is this safety. It's a safety net. You and your loved ones are safe because you're safe from anything that could perceive of you, okay? They can still see you, but they cannot touch you. That's the feeling. Let's get a message about how Divine Masculine is seeing the Divine Feminine at this time. How's Divine Masculine seeing the Feminine? Obviously, they see you with appreciation. They see you as a very mystical being. They see that you are psychic and that you see what is not readily revealed. Okay, they see that you know probably what's coming in the future. They see that you can sense hostile energy. The fish. Let's read about the fish. Okay. So they're seeing Divine Feminine as the fish. And that's Pisces energy, that's more psychic energy. It's more telepathy as well. And I also want to see how divine feminine is seeing the masculine. Divine feminine is seeing the masculine as the dolphin. So you're both getting these sea animals, which is um, very Syrian to me. It's a very, it's like the ascended masters here. Okay. The fish is restlessness. It's lost in the current and it's change of focus. So this is how the masculine is seeing the divine feminine. Okay. Um, distracted, changes their mind often, and also it can mean adaptable and travels well. Um, okay, they see you as someone who is adaptable. That's what I'm getting. The fish loves to be submerged in life's currents. Nothing pleases it more than movement, movement, and more movement. The roaming lifestyle of the fish may be exhilarating for a while, but usually leads to weariness and slippery relationships. They, okay, they're actually seeing Divine Feminine. This is interesting. They're seeing you as slippery at this time. They're seeing you as restless. Um, okay, with all the possibilities out there in the vast waters, the fish becomes lost without clear goals and intentions. Spend some time with the lunar forces, dear fish, as the peace and calm of the moon will soothe your soul. Um, I'm not going to say that this is totally um, accurate for how they're seeing the feminine. They may see you as connected to the lunar force of the moon, which at this time is changeable, is changing because you as a crone, as a high priestess, you divine feminine are reflecting the nature of the earth as the nature of the earth is moving through um, massive cycles. And so you yourself are gonna be reflecting that back to the masculine because we are not set in our new reality yet. And we're in between realities. And so you may be restless. You may seem to be like 
you can't be pinned down. They can't pin you down. They don't know what you want. They see you as not having set intentions and they see you as someone maybe who's, who is not serious at this time in some type of way. Um, and the masculine, it's interesting because Divine Feminine is seeing the masculine as the dolphin, which is this very joyful energy that feels very lighthearted, very high vibrational. I feel like Divine Masculine is getting in their stride, is finding themselves again, and is finding, because the thing is Divine Masculine was not at home in the Piscean age. I, and that's funny because we get the fish. The Piscean age is what we're coming out of when we're moving into the Aquarian age. And so neither one of us were meant for the Piscean age because it was too patriarchal. It was not about divine union energy. It was not about the feminine at all. And so we're gonna see divine feminine and divine masculine reaching a much more harmonious um, cosmic alignment. The cosmic egg is here on the bottom of the deck. The union energy between you is the cosmic egg. And that's the sense of the most um, truth connected to your Kundalini, connected to your mysticism. Okay. And that's the age of Aquarius that we're moving into. The dolphin is innately intelligent and a healer a light and blessings. This is this, and I wanna read this because it's very um, accurate to how Divine Feminine has always seen the masculine. And I feel like the masculine is now seeing themselves this way. Okay, because this is what's been coming through in the Patreon. If you're interested in doing Patreon, I've been doing daily check-ins over there, but okay, I will still be on YouTube as much as I can be. And probably more in January, because we're getting more energy. Um, the more light codes. So the gifts of the dolphin are beyond what our human minds can grasp. Dolphin personalities are often drawn to the healing arts as they are sensitive to the subtle and enjoy working on the level of spirit. It's easy for dolphin types to underestimate the impact they make in the world. These creatures play such an important role in the wheel of karma that coming in contact with a dolphin type will change the entire course of your day and thus your life. And that's what happens when you meet your divine masculine. And typically when anyone meets a divine masculine, they are forever changed. Okay, this card can also indicate a profound blessing is on the way. It's a strong spiritual practice. It's an active healer. Someone who also can underestimate their own power. And that's very common as well with divine masculine is that they underestimate how powerful they are. Um, but I don't feel like you're doing that anymore. I feel like as we move into this golden age, you are going to know how powerful you are. Divine Masculine. Okay. And Cosmic Egg. Yeah. Let's get a guide. Who's guiding us? The unions. Okay. And I feel like we're going to start to see what Divine Union truly looks like which is gonna be very different than what people may have in mind because it's unseen. I'm getting this connected to the unseen, the yin-yang, the unions that we don't see yet, but we feel the energy very strong. Okay. Horus, cosmic gateway. Right, okay. So Horus is guiding us through this cosmic gateway to wherever we're meant to end up, which is gonna be like we're traveling through time in order to get to the union. And I feel like you're traveling all the way back to the beginning again. Because the thing with Twin Flames, the, twin, the thing with Divine Counterparts is that your connection is not linear and it doesn't feel linear. So you can think back to when you first met your, your counterpart, when you first met your Twin Flame, and then the last time you saw them, or whatever, it's gonna feel like it's not linear because you're you're not really meeting in a linear way. You're meeting outside of time and space because when you connect to your divine counterpart, you're connecting to your higher self, you're connecting to your mirror soul, and it time and space dissolve in those moments 
when you're together. So time and space dissolve and you're left with a feeling that is very otherworldly. And so when you think of where you're going, you're going to the beginning again. When you're going into union with your counterpart, you're going to somewhere that feels very cosmic and you're anchoring that energy into the earth because we're moving to a time in the age of Aquarius that's very cosmic, that's not defined by time and space. And that's where the divine counterparts will be aligned to each other when the rest of this earth has a shakeup and we start to dissolve time because no one's gonna be wearing watches, knowing what time it is, knowing what day it is. We're not gonna have a calendar as we go in the age of Aquarius. All of that is going to dissolve. Okay, and that's coming from Horus. So I'm gonna get a fairy card here. Let's get an elemental energy and just lighten the mood a little bit here, okay. Horus also, we're getting ancient Egypt timelines coming back around because the Egyptians, we were the Egyptians. We were able to create pyramids through sound frequency. And so we're gonna start to tap into this technology again, the ability to vibrate, the ability to vibrate our vessels in a way that's much more ancient, but it's also very futuristic. Okay, because what's gonna happen is time is gonna flip upside down and we're gonna realize that we are actually going forward into what we think of as ancient Egypt. We're going forward towards Atlantis. It's not in the past, it's in the future. It's all been in the future. It's all been coming because really there's nothing different between what you remember and what you can foresee. You're using the same parts of the brain when you access memory, as well as when you are imagining what's to come in the future or when you are reading something psychically that is about to occur. It's the same part of the brain. Your brain doesn't know that it's not actually happening at all now. And we're getting the singers of healing, which is funny because I got this yesterday for the Patreon and I just shuffled this deck um, the whole time I was talking. So healing is a very p powerful energy today because we've got the dolphin, which is the active healer, We've got the singers of healing from the fairies because Divine Masculine is here to heal the wounds of the family, to heal with the cancer energy here. You and your loved ones are safe. You're ready to, to morph into a total new reality here where you are healed, where you are helping others with healing. So let's see what it says about the singers of healing and then we'll wrap this up because I feel like that's a lot for us to be prepared to go towards January with all this energy, okay? And it says healing of body, mind, and spirit. And the song of the singer has the power of healing deep wounds of the spirit. Wounds that can destroy mortals or immortals alike. Faith betrayed, love dishonored, trust abandoned, and other injuries of the spirit all inflict serious wounds, which are reflected in the body's illnesses and injuries. Through the song of healing, we may be restored and renewed, but only if the wounded one is prepared to forgive and let go, returning to love and compassion. As always, with all gifts of spirit, healing is offered, not forced and requires active participation on our part. Okay, true healing must take place on all levels at once, body, mind, and spirit. These levels are in extra, <laughs> inextricably linked, all one piece, and we cannot expect to change one without changing the others. Right, because it's not about healing only mentally, healing only physically. It's about healing the spiritual wounds, we are really healing our co collective spiritual deficit where we do not think of ourselves as spiritual beings. And when you, the thing with the matrix, this, this is what I wanna leave you with. And this is also what 
what's going to occur in January, okay? The matrix cuts you off from spirit. But when you're born, everything in the matrix serves to disconnect the silver cord that connects you to your higher self, to the spiritual realms, to the cosmic higher dimensions, to this cosmic gateway that Horus is so connected to. It comes through all the time for our wave, by the way. Um, so what's happening is through the twin flames that have been activated on this earth, that have been feeling divine love and compassion for each other unconditionally. It's an unconditional, reciprocated, divine love through the heart that connects you to spirit, that connects you back to being a whole being again. And so when you're with your twin flame, you're disconnected from the matrix fully. And that's what everyone who's going to be experiencing this radical shift into fifth dimension is going to feel. They're going to feel what it feels like to be disconnected from the matrix and to be connected back to your whole powerful self. And that's the way twin flames feel when you meet your counterpart, when you're physically with your counterpart. And that's why the activation is so undeniably powerfully strong. And that's why we don't doubt the connection, okay? Uh, because it's, you feel like yourself again when you have not been um, disconnected from who you are. So, right, because Twin Flames knew that in order for us all to come back to propel us into the age of Aquarius, you'd have to have mass numbers of Twin Flames meet each other to be able to hold this higher frequency of fifth dimension to shift everyone who is then going to be ready because it's not only the twin flames holding the higher frequency, it's also the earth itself. Gaia is holding a higher frequency. The stars are guiding us. The moon is guiding us. The sun is giving us light codes, is activating us. So all of this, all these celestial beings are working together to get Gaia up leveled and activated into a higher frequency. So I will leave you with that. And I'm sending you all much peace and light. Take care, everyone.